YouTube, Jake Kilroy here, back in the shop, little shop ADHD. And it's been a while. I miss you guys. Um, before we get started, John Saunders, I really wanted to make it to the open house. I apologize. I told some people I was going to be there. I was going to be there, but it, it really just came down to I could go to your open house or I could go to the bash. And uh, so the bash won out. And uh, anyway, it looked like everybody had a great time. Wish I could have been there to enjoy. And uh, but look forward to seeing everybody at the bash here soon. Um, so we got a few things to go over here, as you can see. Uh, like a lot of the other guys, I got a uh, package here from Niagara Cutter. Uh, we're going to go over this. This is kind of the star of this show, but in no way to diminish. A package they got from Mr. Paul Compton. Uh, if you remember my previous uh, shop ADHD, where or I think it was a Feed the Monster, where I had a, a rather unusual tap and die set that had been sent to me by an individual overseas, and it was British Standard Cycle Thread uh, pitch, mostly 26 pitch. And um, anyway, after that, Mr. Paul Compton, also uh, from Great Britain, sent me a contribution to, I guess, the ever burgeoning collection of the oddest tap and die sizes known to man. And um, not to be outdone, uh, he has provided with what has got to be the most uh, mind boggling weird tap and die sizes. And um, so uh, here we go. I uh, made by how it says here Harris ground thread taps. And this box here, they are. Well, it's a full set of um, starter. A, uh, and all the way through to a bottoming tap and um, they are 5 sixteenths by 27 left hand so that's pretty cranking weird and um, I have two sets of these I believe they're both the same thread um, Five sixteenths. Um, actually, no. These are these are five sixteenths by. Oh, well, they're five sixteenths by twenty-seven as well. Uh, five sixteenths by twenty-seven left hand with the matching die. Now, this means I'm going to have to do a project where I actually use a five sixteenths by 27 left-handed thread. Uh, these were all made by a company uh, uh, called Harris in England. Um, I could not find any dates, um, but Paul opined that these may have come from uh, aircraft manufacturing. Uh, then I have some other, uh, I have a one quarter by 24 13 16 OD round die, also of left hand thread, and a quarter by 24, and this is a, a 1 and 5 16 round die, also again of left hand. So, Paul, it's been a while since you sent these to me. I don't want you to feel like I haven't appreciated it. I think it is a fantastic addition, very unique addition to the collection, and it will. Um, take up residence in the collection and uh, I will be looking for a project to use these on. Um, if you have not seen Paul's channel, go to the cards, go below and go to Paul's channel and check out the good work that the man does on his channel. If you're a motorcycle buff, ever more so, get on over to Paul's channel and check it out. So, uh, a lot of fun um, with Paul's channel. 
And thank you very much, Paul, again for the gift and donation. I know it's a pain in the butt to ship stuff overseas, so thank you very much. All right, next, got a letter and some stickers from uh, Jim Bowling of, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it, of Do Right Fabrication. And uh, he's coming to the bash. If you're not coming to the bash, you're going to wish you had. Get on down there. Uh, and he sent some uh, his new stickers, and I have to say, the artwork is very nice. Um, I'm going to be emailing Jim to see where he got these made because I need to get new stickers made, and this is just really quality. So we're going to add, Jim, to the chest here. Big sticker. So we've got to find a suitable spot. I don't think you can see that. So we're going to clean off another spot. We're going to stick Jim right up here. Jim, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at the bash as well. Seeing all the guys I saw last year, meaning new viewers and new creators. Uh, the bash is going to be fantastic. So check out um, some of the other creators that are going. I mean, everybody's going to be there. Uh, look down below for links to Stan's channel and for information on the bash. And um, we'll go from there. And now, on to the main event. Let me, uh, oh, and links to Direct Fabrication in the cards and down below as well. Please uh, check out their channels. Um, you know, he's doing something right. I can tell you that much right now. All right, so here we go. The main event. The box from Niagara Cutter. Um, also, just a little shout out to my dad. Here is the birthday present that my father gave me this last weekend. I most recently turned 50 and um, it kind of brings me back to when I was a child because it seemed like every Christmas somebody had to get a knife. Anyway, I'm not a knife collector, but I do know a good knife when I see one and this is a quality knife. So uh, let's get with it. And this is obviously opening it right here with you. So let's check it out. Uh, first thing first, I'm a huge fan of Niagara Tool. I haven't opened this yet, but just to kind of throw down some of my Niagara cred, um, here's some recent tooling acquisitions that um, I spent my hard earned money on. And uh, these are Niagara. Obviously, this is a uh, inch and a quarter, six flute rougher. Um, it's a, probably a cobalt. Yeah, I believe it's a Coelius. Uh, on on Nagras, if you see HSCO, it's a cobalt. And um, inch and a quarter is one of my favorite sizes. So there you go. Just so you know that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Leather here from Dennis. Um, uh, I've been chosen to be included in a group of YouTube creators that create educational videos on machining trade. Niagara Cutter and Seco Tools, I believe you pronounce it Seco, not Seco, have been long, long been supporters of continuing education on machining trades by donating to for that purpose. And we thank you very much, Dennis. Fantastic. Um, so thank you and um, let's get on with it. Uh, Dennis, uh, who is a subscriber to many of the creators, 
uh, is a senior designer for uh, Seiko, which I believe is the parent company, Seiko Tools. And boy, this stuff's heavy. So let's see what we got in here. Dennis did say that he was going to uh, save some of the bigger items for people that had machines that could use it, and um, that would certainly be me. And I'm sure uh, I saw Keith Rucker's video, same there, and uh, Adam Booth's video. So, uh, and this is a monstrous two inch rougher that looks like that's um it's like a square tooth it's like a square tooth rougher uh two inch shank two inch flute uh, that looks like a good 10 inches nine to ten inches of flute length and um it's sharp i guarantee you uh, eight flute rougher uh, one of the things that's interesting is if you see in a cutter like this is they have a center in the end here you can hold this between centers in a horizontal mill with the uh, shank being held in a traditional end mill cutter end mill holder and then with a center through a type a horizontal holder horizontal support you can hold it uh, through, uh, between centers and use it in a horizontal manner kind of like a slabbing mill and it works out pretty darn well too put that up before I cut myself oh. alright I'm going to put this down on the floor so I can pull out one of these at a time here In no particular order. It's good that I got a knife. I'm getting all sorts of uh, use out of it. Okay, there. I don't know who's happier, me for getting the cutters, my kids for getting bubble wrap to pop. Uh, this is my size here. It's a three quarter inch, four flute, uh, high speed steel. Uh, that's a nice size, uh, usable, and uh, this is about maximally what I normally use in uh, the Bridgie clone over here. Uh, but this is a good size, it's a good working size to have around. Thank you very much there. Two of those. Oop. Let me get that. Sorry about that. Got Keith Fennard there with the phone. So little um, cutter sets here, uh, 5 sixteenths, quarter inch through 5 eighths of an inch. Now these are all real good sizes and that feels good. Uh, two flute, right hand square. There you go. Certainly a nice size. Five eighths is a real, real good size, real good working size. Big enough to where you don't, you're not really scared about really taking a cut, uh, but small enough not to 
uh, really bog your machine down. So uh, very nice. And another set. And these are four flute. Um, similar uh, to the others. Uh, so these are coated. These are roughers. So you got a five, uh, four flute uh, coated rougher there. Very nice. Ruffers are a one. Oh, now you're talking. Now you're talking some meat here. Uh, inserts, various types and grades. Uh, there's a DNMG, that looks like a positive, a DNMG 422, uh, WNM, WNMG, which is a, a 433, which is a great size right there. Um, here's some different, there's a CNMG 434. Nice big nose radius on that. Uh, so we get the pacemaker going. That's going to come in real handy. Another DNMG 433. A uh, couple of WNMGs 431s. And uh, let's see, some VBMT. I don't know if I have a holder that will hold that, but I'm going to have to do something about that. Another VBMT 333. Uh, all with different surface treatments. Um, here we go. Now you're talking. Dennis, above and beyond, sir. Uh, always happy when I have the blue from Niagara Cutter. Uh, it's carbide. So open a couple here. So I'll keep you. Uh, carbide. Right hand, 30 degree, 3 eighths of an inch, uh, rougher with a, it's a three flute with a very interesting grind on the end here. I want you to take a look at this. Very interesting grind. Reminds me of some of the unusual grinds you see in uh, uh, CNC routers, like up cut, down cut. Uh, two flute bits for cutting um, you know it's it's always just fascinating uh, just the just thinking about the machinery used to grind these creative uh, tools it's I mean another you know CNC grinders and uh, it's all enclosed cobalt you know grinding carbide and cobalt produces all sorts of hazardous uh, waste so uh, but but fascinating it'd be interesting to know more about what a cutter like this is for but very interesting and uh, I'll put it to use well there we go with the holder issue uh, that's a WNMG holder there I think the standard number here is a uh, MWLNL 164D. Very nice. Uh, it's a clamp style pen and a seat. So, very, very nice. Can certainly put that to use. Ah, oh. the part off holder for the wrench. This is the um, CFZL 075. This is a Jetstream Max, and it's a uh, parting holder that is uh, drilled and tapped to take coolant. So you could run coolant here this side, 
and it has a jet of coolant that blows out right here across the cutting edge. So that's interesting stuff there. Don't have any coolant through tooling for the lathe, but uh, doesn't mean I'm not open to trying it. Jeez. Another end mill of proportions of which I have become known. There you go. So a two inch, a two inch shank. I guess that's four inch or five inch flute length. It's uh, M42 Cobalt. This is, um, I don't know if there's uh, different names for it, but I have always referred to this as a crest cut style, which was an end mill that was marketed by a weld on for many years. I don't, didn't realize that Niagara made this style grind. Again, looking at a cutter like this, look at this, really makes you think about the tooling and the machines that go into grinding a cutter like this. Uh, it would be fascinating. You can kind of tell by looking at the tool path that they took a regular end mill with regular straight flutes and cut this is probably taking my life into my own hands doing that cut this crest cut style I don't know what uh, Niagara refers to this as let's see if there's anything in the package nothing um, but um, it does have the same effect, the crest cut does, the same effect as a rougher in that it, it, it lengthens the effective cutting edge uh, for the same size cut, so it reduces your cutting forces by doing so. Uh, all sorts of other goodies in here. Now these look like 5 sixteenths, uh, various different uh, configurations and coatings of 5 16 uh, cutters. I believe those are carbide. Uh, some inch and an eighth. Ah, here's one of my favorite size. Inch and a quarter. Four flute. Non-center cutting. I guarantee you, you could shave with that bad boy right there. That is sharp. Uh, that is a beautiful piece of tooling, and I will put it to very good use. Thank you very much. This is like kid in a candy store. Now let's go over some of the more unusual stuff. Oh, look at this. This is um, three eighths. Three eighths. Yep, three eighths. Uh, one inch flute, five inch total length. Hmm, I might we mount that up in the K and D and bury in that some steel and see what happens. I, I don't think so. Now you're talking there. Look at that. That is a one inch three flute. Looks like about two inches of flute length. Solid carbide coated end mill. And that is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cutter. Carbide is, you know, a lot of people, uh, especially home shop guys, hobbyists, and small shop guys shy away from buying carbide. Let me tell you why you shouldn't. Because in normal use on manual machines with conscientious use, a carbide cutter is going to last you many times more versus the increased cost of a carbide cutter. Carbide will last you much, much longer and give you much more 
performance, much more metal removed than a high spill steel cutter or a cobalt cutter of the same configuration. So don't be uh, afraid of, of investing in carbide because it will pay you back dividends, um, I guarantee you. Um, if you're a person that normally spends most of their time working in aluminum or brass or less challenging materials, carbide will last <laughs> for as long as you will, for the most part. Um, so make the investment. And in this case, obviously, I'm suggesting that you make the investment in Niagara. So similar, just a longer cutting edge. This is a one inch, is this one inch still? Yep. One inch, a two inch flute, or two and five eighths inch flute, six inch overall length, solid carbide. Uh, on this one, note, there is no weld on flat. Uh, so I am not going to grind and mark up on the tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this in a collet. So this will probably go in the Kearney Trekker in a TG150 collet, uh, which um, will hold this just fine. And um, this will perform wonders. A three flute, I really do like a three flute. Uh, it's kind of a nice compromise if you're just going to keep something in the spindle. A three flute is a great tool to keep in there because you can cut steel with it, you can cut aluminum with it. You can cut plastic with it, a little bit of anything. And this is a, uh, just beautiful. My goodness gracious. Okay, look at there. Another one inch by one inch, one and a quarter inch flute length. This is a five flute solid carbide. Um, these all have a reduced shank too. Um, so uh, as in the flute diameter is actually larger in diameter than this portion of the shank. So the shank is actually recessed. And the reason for that is in a, in a production CNC style environment is you can cut with this cutter right up against the wall inside a pocket and still take a cut uh, with the flutes. So this is great for pocketing, uh, great for cutting right up to surfaces and um, that's why it's designed that way. Uh, this is ridiculously sharp. Uh, just willing, willing and ready to take my finger right the heck off. Uh, we have some more stuff here, um, some smaller cutters. I'm just going to read these out here, quarter by quarter, um, carbide. Uh, this is, oh, well, this is interesting. I, I'll show you this. Looks like a rasp, really, right? So this is uh, something that you could use both in a machine. Um, it's, it's listed as an end mill, not a burr, so, um, and it, it's basically effectively uh, like an eight flute uh, double cut. It's kind of like, like, a, like a micro rougher, if you look at the way that that's arranged. But effectively that turns out to, this would be, I, I suspect this would be really good in, in uh, hard plastics. Phenolics, this would work really well. Um, I've never used anything like this in metal before, but you know, we'll look into it. That's unusual. Thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, okay, this has to win the prize for the smallest and least likely to see the Kearney Trekker. Five sixty fourths. So let's do a little comparison and contrasting with the two inch. <laughs> Five sixty fourths. Five sixty fourths. One eighth shank. 
four flute carbide. Um, you know, to do this justice, I'd have to mount it into a Dremel tool. <laughs> I don't have anything that'll turn that kind of RPM. <laughs> but certainly something like that could come in real handy if you need it. Uh, there's another micro, well, not micro, five millimeter ball nose two flute carbide. Useful. Hey, um, Stefan, if you're watching, I can honestly say I have a metric end mill now. Five millimeter carbide two flute. This is something uh, Stefan would pull out uh, uh, in a heartbeat in his shop there. Oh, one eighth by one eighth by three. Yeah, I'm not gonna crack that baby, am I? What do you think? Uh, this a uh, four flute ball, one eighth by one eighth, three inch shank. I would hate to see the program that was designed to run that. Many lines of code. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Five flute carbide, small tooth rougher, uh, fast pitch flutes. This is for hard materials. Uh, the stuff nobody wants to work with. Uh, 316. Well, that kind of hosed up. It's right in the middle of finishing that up, and the camera stopped recording, but didn't tell me. Anyway, I kept on going um, and uh, went through everything here, um, was through most of it here, and I just want to say thank you very much to the folks at Niagara Cutter. Um, you, you are my go-to brand, and um, these tools will be put to great use and uh, uh, used carefully and professionally because um, I appreciate your donation and uh, we'll treat it with respect. So now for something a little different. There you go. This box here is the box that Niagara so generously donated uh, to the channel. All the rest that you see here is um, Niagara tooling that I have purchased with my own hard-earned money. Um, I am a huge fan of Niagara Cutter. Um, this is in no way near represents the totality of my uh, inventory. Um, this is but a small portion of the horizontal milling cutters that I have. Um, but I didn't just, nah, this is enough to, I think this gets the point across. Uh, when I'm looking for cutters, Niagara's where I go. and. Uh, Thank you very, very much for the donation. It will be put to good use. Uh, again, I look forward to seeing everybody at the bash. I look forward to getting some projects back up here. I got a little solar, some solar stuff coming up soon, which is a little different thing for the channel. Um, got to do a little work on some tool holders. Um, got some 50 taper tool holders that aren't quite working, and we're going to have to modify those. Uh, I'm going to have to spend 45 minutes putting all this back up. But uh, no problem. Uh, be safe in the shop, and I'll be back with you soon.